Sunday, God's house. Uh, a couple of announcements here. Uh, men, don't forget uh, Cornerstone Men's Discipleship Monday, April the 1st there at, over in Russ County, and we'd love to have you all there with us if you can come, and if you can't meet here at the church with us and worried about being there right at 6, don't worry about it, come on anyway, because usually they have the meal first, and usually 6.15 or 6.30 we get started eating down there and then have a worship and message after the meal so come on be with us you'll be blessed by that and also this tuesday highway 80 rescue mission if you can help with that and be there love to have you and men if you'll come like to come join at the altar here this morning for a time of prayer
We have a time of silent prayer here first, and then I'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time we can gather here in your house this morning, Lord, and just pray on this Resurrection Sunday, Lord. Just We just thank you and praise you, Lord, for for that resurrection so many years ago. Your son Jesus rose from the grave, Lord, that give us that hope, Lord, and that assurance, Lord, that one day we, we can be with you in heaven. We just thank you and praise you for that, Lord, and just pray that you just continue to be with our services here this morning, Lord, just during the worship time, Lord, that your presence will be felt here, Lord, and pray that you just be with Brother Donnie as he brings the message this morning, just speak through him that you would have, and Lord, just pray that you continue to be with our church, Lord, just help us continue to be that light for you, Lord, to the lost, just share your gospel, Lord, and that, that more people will have that joy and assurance, Lord, that being in heaven one day. We just pray the thing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir and men. Thank you for coming forward. And Jimmy, thank you. Welcome. It is great to see you today. Uh, thank you for being in uh, the house of the Lord on Easter Sunday. It is so good to see you. If you're a guest with us today, we're especially glad that you're here. Thank you. Hey, at the end of our service, if you'll give us just a few minutes, we'd love to give you a gift. We'll have just a short guest reception right outside the doorway on that side. If you've got a second, stop by. We'd love to give you one of the gifts uh, for our guest, and we would love to just say thank you for being here, and we welcome you this morning. Thank you for being in the Lord's house today. Hey, it's going to be a very special day. We're going to have several things that, that uh, go on. And one of the most special things that uh, we're going to do is we get to visit for just a few minutes with these children. So, uh, children, I'm going to ask you to come forward. Tony, would you bring me my other microphone real quick, if you can, just a sec. Hey, children, y'all come up here for just a second. I want to spend some time. Most of our children are either in our, uh, either in our uh, extended service or in our uh, children's care during the service, but I want to spend just a few moments with them uh, this morning. So guys, if y'all will sit right there and leave me one spot, let me get my other mic on. That's perfect. Guys, it is so good to see y'all today. Thank y'all for worshiping with us and for being in our service today. Y'all are an important part of our Easter Resurrection Sunday day. Y'all look fabulous, by the way. Y'all are dressed up and you look so good. I'm glad you're here. Hey, uh, after church today, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt. And I hope you can stay and participate. And if you didn't bring a basket, we've got some that you can use. And it will be outside of our building. Uh, you'll be told where to go and your parents will know where to go. And there are going to be some things on the ground that y'all will be running around looking for. Anybody know what those things are that are on the ground? There's going to be eggs out there. There's going to be some that are like this. There's going to be some that are much bigger. Dude, you look sharp in that shirt too, man. Oh, and you look beautiful in that dress. Everybody looks great this morning. Hey, some of the eggs are going to be small. Some of the eggs are going to be big. Some of the eggs are going to have candy in them. Some of them, 
some of them may, and this past Wednesday night, we had about 40 or so people packing all the eggs. And there were, there were some young students from uh, junior high and high school in there that were packing those eggs. And there were, there were some people that, that, have, that were parents and grandparents. There were people that were, that were retired school teachers and, and had worked for a long time. So there were some young and not so young. And there were some, and one of them came up to me and handed me this egg. Now, you got to admit, that's a pretty funny egg, isn't it? <laughs> that egg has something on the inside, doesn't it? Now, y'all are going to... Oh, you can figure it out, can't you? Yeah, that's what this one is, is it? Is that not crazy? Is that a Starburst? No, let me show you. Wait, look. I got it taped so it wouldn't come open. There's going to be about... I think it might be a lemonhead. I think there's going to be about 10 of these out there. Some like this, okay? And they're really fun because you open it up and, oh my goodness, this one is a sucker. Look at that. Oh, can you believe that was in here, huh? Is that not crazy? I know. Hey, there's going to be some out there like this. Hey, there's going to be some out there that might have like a, a dollar bill in it. Or Can you believe that? Whoa, that changed everything, didn't it? Sorry, mom's right there. No, that's crazy. So there's going to be some that have that. Hey, there might be some that have even some more money than that in it. But listen, listen. No, I got to keep that. Sorry. Hey, because if I had one for everybody, I'd give it away. But just in case you open up one that is empty. Because there might be some that are empty. And if you do, that's okay. Because listen, Easter is not about Easter eggs. Now, it's fun. I'm gonna, I'll be out there with, with you when y'all are hunting Easter eggs. I may get there just a little late, but I'll be out there so that y'all can, as you pass by me, y'all can give me an egg, y'all keep an egg. Give me an egg, y'all keep an egg. Give me an egg, y'all keep an egg. Well, it's called the pastor's tax. Y'all just pay me one egg, and then we get that. Right? Does it, does it work that way? No. No, it doesn't work that way. No, no, no. I'll give you one But listen. If you pick one up that's empty, this is what the Easter egg reminds us of. That on the very first Sabbath, for us, that's a Sunday morning, Mary and another lady named Mary and a couple of other ladies went to the tomb where Jesus was, and the tomb was closed shut. It had had a big stone rolled in front of it. Like an Easter egg. Kind of like an Easter egg. But when those ladies got there, that big stone had been rolled away. And the tomb where Jesus was, was wide open. You know why? It wasn't so Jesus could get out. Jesus was was the Son of God. He could have knocked that stone out of the way or just walked right through the walls of it. The stone was rolled away and the tomb was open so that we could see in and that it was empty. That Jesus wasn't there. The angels there said, come on in, y'all, and look inside. Jesus isn't here. He's risen. He's alive. And so today, listen, if y'all find an Easter egg that's got a well, it's got a sucker in it like this. Oh, that's pretty cool. Or if it's got something other, other in it that's sweet, that's kind of cool. Or if it's got a dollar bill or even, even more money than that, that's pretty cool. But if you pick up one that's empty, that doesn't have anything in it, to me, that's the most special. Because that's the one that reminds us of Jesus. Boys and girls, let me say a prayer and thank God that Jesus is alive, that that tomb was empty, and that we know about Jesus. Let me say a prayer. Father, I thank you for these children and for the, the families from which they come. Thank you that, that they, they have them in church today and that we're all in church today. And thank you that we get to remember that that tomb was opened up so that we could see Jesus was alive. And thank you that that's one thing that kind of reminds us of who you are and what you did when we hunt for Easter eggs. It just reminds us about Jesus and that tomb being opened up. Father, would you bless these children? 
Would you bless their families? And would you bless what they're about to do in Children's Church? I pray a blessing on them. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, one of these teachers and workers are going to tell y'all what to do. But thank y'all for being here. Y'all are an important part of our church. We love y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you, boys and girls. I think that one was pink. That one was, it was made to be pink. Because there were several in the package like that one. I think that's a pink. I think, you know, I think it's delicious. That's what I think it is. I got golden eggs and I got golden eggs. I wanted a donut this morning. If you want to know the colors, it's green. I saw the colors. Green? Thank you. I didn't know what color it was. So thank you. It's a green egg. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Ash. Thank you, boys and girls. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for bringing your, your children and grandchildren. Thank you. Ready, Anderson? I need you behind me. London. London, I need you. Let's go. Here we go. Let's walk. Boom. 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 Hey, one more, uh, two more real quick announcements. Uh, in your bulletin, there, there is uh, a handout talking about our cake pie auction. That's a very special time for us. That's how we uh, support our student ministry. Uh, in fact, uh, the last several years, there's been enough that's come in on our cake and pie auction for every uh, student in our children's camp and in our uh, uh, high school and junior high camp for every student to have their way paid. No student has had to pay to go to camp here several years, and that's mostly because of the cake and pie auction. There's a flyer in your bulletin that, that says it's one date. It's not going to change the date for you. April the 21st. April the 21st is when that's going to be. So we apologize for an incorrect date in there. Uh, that would be my fault. I did not catch that in time, so my, my fault on that one. I'll get that corrected. You'll see it again next week. Hey, I'll be drinking coffee tomorrow morning at Dairy Queen in White Oak. I'll be there from 7.30 till we get through. If, you have, if you're free during that time, would you come? I'll buy you a cup of coffee. If you want breakfast, I'll let you buy yourself breakfast. So come, and we'll enjoy a time together of fellowship. That's at the Dairy Queen in White Oak, 7.30 in the morning. Now listen, I'm sorry, 6.30. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Yes. 6.30. Thank you. I'm just checking my calendar in my brain. You are correct. 6.30 tomorrow morning. Hey, and this Tuesday, hey, we've been asked to do something. We've done it before. In fact, we've done it several times. But this coming Tuesday uh, at lunch, we will feed about 200 students at Kilgore College. Uh, the Baptist Student Ministry uh, there is housed, and our association does um, all of that Baptist Student Ministry. Uh, we will go and feed them. And if you would like to help us go and do that, we'll leave here about 9.30 on Tuesday to go over there and get set up. But if you would not like to go, but you'd like to help in another way, would you cook us a dessert to take? And anything is welcome. If you want to cook us some cookies, that would be fine. If you want to cook us uh, some brownies, that'd be fine. In fact, in your bulletin, there's uh, information about it. And I put uh, cookies and uh, cake and uh, 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 brownies, uh, pie. I, I, I could have included donuts. I, uh, I don't care. Straight sugar. Anything could be fine. <laughs> Students at college don't care. Uh, they'll take anything. So if you could help us by that, if you could have those here by 9 o'clock Tuesday morning, we'll get them sorted out, loaded up. You don't even have to cut them and put them in individual pa packets because we're going to lay them out on uh, plates there, and, and we just need your help. So that's Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. If you could have them here by 9 o'clock, that would help us greatly. It is great to see you in church this morning. It's great to be gathered in worship. And no doubt, there's some that you do not know their name, some that are in this room. Would you mind, I'm going to do it, and I will join you. Would you mind just finding two people, two people that you don't know their name, just walk up and say, hello, my name is, I promise you, they'll answer you back with their name. So stand up and greet somebody. Let's welcome each other to the house of the Lord. Stand up and greet.
Thank you, thank you. You can move back towards your seat. Love to hear you fellowshipping. It is great. Great to have you today. Hey, if you're a part of our sunrise service, let me say a, a thank you to the men that uh, rebuilt and uh, straightened up and cleaned up out at our cathedral in the pines. Uh, you did a blessing for us. So to those men, thank you. We appreciate it. And it was a great, great service. So thank y'all. We appreciate it. Thank you. Worship team, choir, thank you. Singing about a risen Savior, so let's rise, okay? Here we go. Rise. Savior, waiting. 
Thank you. You may be seated.
bless you. Glory 
precious blood that gave me life. Praise the Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. They all walk away, nothing to say. They just lost their dearest friend. And all that he said now he was dead so this was the way it would end the dreams that they dreamed were not what they'd seen now that he was dead and gone the garden the jail the hammer the nails how could a night be so long? Then came the morning, night turned into day, the storm was rolled away, hope rose with the dark. Before the sun, death had lost and life had won, for morning had come. The angel, the star, the kings from afar. The wedding, the water, the wine Now it was done They'd taken her son Wasted before his time She knew it was true She watched him die too She heard them call him just a man but deep in her heart, she knew from the start, somehow her son would live again. Then came the morning, night turned into day, the storm was rolling. Then came the morning 
shadows vanished before the sun. Death had lost and life had won. For morning had come. Death had lost and life had won. For morning had come. Amen. Thank you, Trey, and thank you, Sarah and choir. Uh, what a great, and worship team. What a great worship time this morning. You'll worship in just a second to one more song by, uh, by our signing ministry team. Uh, you'll be blessed by it as well. Hey, you have blessed us as a church family by your giving uh, week after week. You do such a good job of that. Thank you. We don't pass an offering plate, so don't, don't worry. One's not fixing to come by you. But if you'd like to give, we want to give you that opportunity. And there's offering plates back there. Uh, as you leave, you're welcome to drop an offering in there. If you'd like to use an envelope, they're provided for you. If you want to bless a ministry, write on there what you want to bless. If you want to just give to the general budget, do that. If you want to uh, put that towards missionaries, you can do that. If you want to bless maybe the Kilgore College ministry that we're going to go and feed tomorrow. Or if you want to bless the next time we go down to the border and feed the the Border Patrol and law enforcement and the Army and National Guard that are down there, you can mark it. However you want to give, we just thank you. Thank you to our finance team that works so hard each week, making sure that everything is done. Y'all do a great job. But thank you for giving. Thank you for being a church that believes in ministry and missions. And you do. You give every week. It's in your bulletin how, how that's given and what's recorded and what's given. It's very transparent. So thank you for doing, doing that. Thank you for giving. I'm just going to pray and ask God to bless the offering, to bless what you and I give, to use it best to further the kingdom and, and to let others know that, that his son, Jesus Christ, uh, died for our sins, shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins, but what we celebrate today on that third day rose again. So I'm going to pray and ask for God to bless the offering and maybe take your gift or mine right straight to someone that doesn't know Christ and they can use that gift, what you give. They can use that particular gift to tell them how Jesus loves them and how they can be saved. So you pray about what you might give. I'll, I'll pray about what we might give, and, and we'll be faithful in giving. Let's, let's pray together. Father God, thank you for being able to worship. Uh, we don't take for granted where we live, and, and you've given us protection and freedom to be able to celebrate today. None of us worry about someone coming in here and and keeping us from doing this, we're safe in doing that. We're protected by, by our response team, and I'm grateful for them that, that serve, and, and we're able to worship freely. Father, thank you also that we're able to give freely. You give us resources, and you ask us to give some back to you, and I thank you for a church that's so faithful to do that. Thank you for those that have already given, and thank you for those that will give before this day is over. And bless them. Thank you that your word says when we give to you, you turn it around and, and you give us more back and you bless us in ways we don't even know how you do it. So bless those that give. And I do pray that, that something that's given today, one, two, ten, however many, that's given today will go straight to some channel and into some way end up in front of somebody that doesn't know your son and that that offering can be the way, the avenue that they find out about Jesus Christ and what Jesus did for them. And that that gift will be the one that makes the difference. And that someone will accept Christ as their Savior. The risen Savior. Because of what someone gives today. So bless the offering. Continue to bless as we worship. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. A crown of thorns placed on his head He knew that he would soon be dead He said, did you forget me, Father, did you? They nailed him to a wooden cross Soon all the world would feel the loss of Christ
He hung his head and prepared to die, then lifted his face up to the sky, said, I am coming home now, Father, to you. A reed which held his final sip was gently lifted to his lips. He drank his last and gave his soul to glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The soldier who had used his sword to pierce the body of our Lord said truly this was Jesus Christ our Savior He looked with fear upon his sword then turned to face his Christ and Lord fell to his knees crying took from his head the thorny crown and wrapped him in a linen gown then laid him down to rest inside the tomb the holes in his hands his feet inside now with Three days went by, again they came To move the stone, to bless the slain With oil and spice anointing, hallelujah But as they went to move the stone They saw that they were not alone For Jesus Christ has It's almost, uh, I just need to say thank y'all for coming and <laughs> let's go because that's just so beautiful. Uh, all the worship today was uh, each song and our signing ministry, our children. Thank you for bringing your children uh, because we do uh, want to be sure we keep in mind that that song and all of them talked about a risen Savior, a uh, risen meaning alive. That he wasn't kind of dead. He, he wasn't mostly dead. Mostly he wasn't. I was visiting in this morning in the office area, getting some coffee and making some copies. And we were visiting, David and I were visiting about a great, a great movie. Uh, not, not a theologically sound movie, but a great movie. The movie Princess Bride. Have you ever seen that movie? It's 
Okay, like I said, it's not a, you know, it's not a deep theological movie, but it does have some good lines in it. Uh, a lot of people in that movie. Andre the Giant is in it. Billy Crystal plays Miracle Max. And the man that plays Inigo Montoya, his name is Mandy Patnikin. And, and in the movie, M- Miracle Max, well, he's, he's a miracle worker. He's called Miracle, Miracle Max. Well, a good friend of Inigo Montoya is, is dead, he thinks. And he, his only hope is if he takes him to Miracle Max, the one that can bring him back to life. So he takes him there, and, and there's a nice little conversation that goes on between Inigo Montoya about his friend that's dead and, and Miracle Max. And, and Miracle Max says to him after he says, I need him to come alive. Miracle Max says, oh, he probably owes you money, huh? And he says, no, he's dead, and, and he can't talk. To which Miracle Max says, oh, hoo Look who knows so much. It just so happens that your friend here is only mostly dead. He said there's a big difference. This is Miracle Max. Between mostly dead and dead. He said mostly dead is still slightly alive. With all dead, well, with all dead, there's usually only one thing left to do. To which Inigo Montoya says, one thing? What is it? To which Miracle Max says, go through his pockets and look for money. And then Miracle Max does his thing, and it's just in the movies. He brings him back to life. Meaning that he was just mostly dead. Because once you're dead, you don't come back to life. Once you die... You're dead. Now, I know you, you, can, you can say, well, Donnie, what about the people in the Bible? Like Lazarus. Jesus spoke, Lazarus, come forth. And out of that grave came Lazarus. I would say to you that, yeah, Lazarus was dead, but Jesus brought him back to life. But Lazarus died again. He went back to the grave and he stayed there. What about the little boy that Jesus healed? And what about in the Old Testament? They they were people that that we all were brought back to life. And I'm not saying they were mostly dead. But I'm saying everybody in the Bible that was brought back to life died again. Jesus, when he was dead on the cross, dead. They put him in a tomb. Dead. Not mostly dead, but all dead. 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 Jerry Clower would say, graveyard dead. (laughs) He's dead. And three days in that tomb, and he comes back to life to live forever, to never die again, to, to be alive now. One of the songs we sang says, He's alive. He's alive. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives yesterday. Today. He's alive. So yes, we serve a risen Savior. Can we read just one of the stories about Jesus coming back to life from the Gospel of Matthew? Would you mind finding that one in your Bible? Matthew, stand up, Gage, you're the man. And if you'd like to join Gage in standing, we're going to read Matthew chapter 28. He was the first over here. Matthew chapter 28, and I'll have it on the screen. Is that where it asks, James? Yes, sir. I love it. Thank you. I can read that print. That's good, James. Thank you. Matthew 28. And if you want to show that to somebody in your Bible, they may want to look on with you instead of looking at the screen. But Matthew chapter 28. Got it. Hang on, Dennis. Got it, 28, right there. I can read that one too. I can see it on your, on your phones. Yeah, I got it. Matthew 28. If you have found Matthew 28, verse 1, say, I'm there. Yeah. Hey, let's read, follow along if you would. Verses 1 through 10, a story about somebody that wasn't mostly dead. He, he wasn't partly dead, 
uh, he was dead. Uh, one of those songs, in fact, two of those songs talked about the, the wound in his side proving his death. Let's read about it. Matthew 28, beginning with verse 1. Now, after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Notice, the tomb. Not Jesus, the tomb. I like that. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance, verse 3, was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear, verse 4, of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. Not, Not were dead men. They might have just been mostly dead, partly dead, passed out. Not like Jesus. They became like dead men. But verse 5, the angel said to the women, Don't be afraid, for I know you seek Jesus who, past tense, was crucified. crucified. Come, I'm sorry, verse 6, he is not here, present tense, he has risen. Man, that's powerful, isn't it? I love it that it went past tense, present tense, past tense, and now we're back to present tense. Just as he has said, come, see the place where he lay, verse 7. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him. See, I have told you. So, verse 8, they departed quickly from the tomb. With fear and great joy, they ran to tell his disciples. And behold, verse 9, Jesus, that's the risen Savior, met them and said, greetings. And they came up and they took hold of his feet. They worshiped him. And Jesus said to them, don't be afraid, but go tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Oh, he's alive, folks. He's alive. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that Jesus is risen today. Let us celebrate that like we did in worship with the study of your word. And we'll be careful to give you glory, honor, and praise for it. I do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and be seated. Keep your copy of God's word open if you don't mind. I'll point out just a couple of things in our text as we we think about this passage of scripture. Matthew set the tone and and the stage for us. When he wrote his part, Mark, one of the other writers about the gospel, tells us that there's some other ladies that that were going to the grave as well. All of them had gone to buy spices to put on the dead, not mostly, but the dead body of Jesus. Because they all knew that dead bodies began to decay and that there would be smell. Mostly bodies don't smell. Dead bodies smell. They were going there to put spices on the body of Jesus. They certainly cannot be commended or congratulated for their faith. They were not going there to find a risen Savior. They were going there, and our text says it plainly, to see the tomb where Jesus lay. Not the risen Savior. And in their hands were spices. Not to give it to him as a present, but to cover his dead body with spices. Oh, you can get into their hearts. You can get into their, their bodies if you just, for a moment, just think back maybe to a time when you went to a cemetery. A loved one passed on and you went to the cemetery the next day or the next week. The sentiment that you have in your heart, the love that you know, they were feeling all of that. You might have gone there with flowers. They were going there with spices. You knew your loved one had died. They knew their loved one had died. You can feel their their sorrow. You can, with me for just a few minutes, realize exactly what they're feeling. They can be commended for their faithfulness to Jesus. To these Marys, John also, I'm sorry, Matthew also tells us We're at the crucifixion. These Marys were there watching Jesus die. So their faithfulness did not waver. 
They were going there after they saw him dead on that cross taken off. They're going there after the Sabbath to cover his dead body. To do the right thing. Oh, they can't be commended for their faith, but they can be commended for their faithfulness. But you know, Mark tells us that as they were going, Mark was another writer that wrote about the life of Jesus. He says that as they were going, they, they remembered a problem. That big stone. The big rock that had been there and placed there by the officials of Rome to keep the disciples from getting in and stealing the body of Jesus. One of the ladies says to the other, what are we going to do about that stone? These are just two ladies. The stone would have been enormous. Large enough to cover an opening that, that full-grown men could go in carrying a body, place it down on the inside of the cave, come back out. A, a large opening. So we're not talking about a small rock, but a big rock. What are we going to do? They had fear. They had fear going to the tomb. What are we going to do? It's amazing, though, that when they got there, their fear had been taken care of. What they were worried about as they went there with the spices to see the tomb of a dead man, not a mostly dead man, but a completely dead man, all dead. What they feared never happened. What they feared they never faced. What they feared they never faced. Wow, that is good. I, I, maybe I should have preached on that. Maybe I should have included an outline like that. That what, what you fear, mostly, you never face. I'm going to step out on a limb and, well, you can read it. I'm going to step out on a limb and say that that's probably true in your life too. That many of the things that we fear, we never face. Many of the things that we're worried about, usually don't happen. We spend so much time and so much energy occupying our mind with the things that never happen that we're not productive because we're worried about what doesn't happen. They were going there and on the way they got scared. How are we going to move that stone? And God had already took care of it. Can I just say, I think somebody just needs to hear that what you fear the most, God can handle. If He can handle Jesus coming back to life, being resurrected, and from that provide you and me eternal life, then take what you are scared of the most and the very thing that you fear now and realize if this story is true, if the resurrection is true, and I believe that you do believe that or you wouldn't have given up your time to be here. If this story is true, what you fear may never happen. So give it to God. Just hand it straight to God and let God have what you fear. Because what we fear usually doesn't happen. They feared the stone being there and God took care of it. What do we fear today? And... and you know, some may think the earthquake did it. That's cool. God can use an earthquake. Some may say the angel did it. Our text did that. I'll say to you, angels still exist. There are angels amongst us that might make a good movie sometime. Oh, I think they already have. Uh, there'll be angels in the outfield. Rangers and Astros may need the angels in the outfield. I, that might happen too. But I would say to you, even if the angel rolled away the stone, God has a protection of Angels around us. What you are fearing right now, just give it to God. Give it to Him. He can handle it. But I want you to see that God handling that stone is not the main thing. It's not the most important thing. The angel being there is not the most important thing. What's the most important thing? Here's the most important thing. And if you miss everything else, catch this. The most important thing is that an empty tomb was discovered. The tomb that Jesus had been placed in was empty. 
There were eyewitnesses there. People that looked in, went in, uh, ran in, that saw it, and their lives were changed. People knew that the tomb was empty. Oh, I, I can show you, and you, you can find it, uh, archaeological evidence of other great leaders, other great teachers of Jesus' time. People that did great things, extraordinary things, that died and were buried, and they have a tomb that is still filled with, with their bones. But not Jesus' tomb. It's empty. That's the most important thing of, of that story. Oh, it's not what the angel did or what the earthquake did or what the angel said or what the Marys did or what the Marys were, were going to do. The most important thing is that there was an empty tomb that was discovered. Oh, Robert Lowry. Robert Row Lowry in 1826, lived from 1826 to 1899. He wrote in your hymnal the... The song, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. That's number 223. He also wrote, Shall We Gather at the River? That's number 604. But my favorite one that's in your hymnal is the one that we all sang together that said, Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior. Waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. And that second verse said, Vainly they watched the his bed, Jesus my Savior. Vainly, they sealed the grave. Sealed the dead, Jesus my Lord. You know who that verse is talking about? Those, those guards. The ones that were put there to move that stone back and stand there guarding that tomb. Vainly. Vainly, they seal the tomb. Vainly, they watch his bed. Uh, I can only imagine what it was like when they reported back to their superiors. Uh, everything okay down there? Uh, well, not exactly. What do you mean? Well, the stone was rolled away. Rolled away? Well, by who? And they might have said, well, an angel. An angel? Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Or it might have been the earthquake. An earthquake? Well, we, we really don't know. Well, why don't you know? Well, we fell to the ground shaking and we're like dead men. Can you imagine having to report that back? And, and these, weren't, these weren't new privates in the military. These were seasoned guards because it was an important task to guard that tomb. Vainly, they watched the Watched his bed, Jesus my Lord. Vainly they sealed the tomb of Jesus my Lord. But you sang it out loud. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. And then you sang it loudly. Oh, he lives. He lives. And he's still alive. He's still alive now. That stone couldn't keep him in. The guards couldn't keep him in. Nothing could keep our Savior in. That's a fascinating story. That you, you, can, you can believe it or not believe it, but it's the truth. So from that story, very quickly, can I give us, really it's just two takeaways this morning. Just two thoughts to, to leave with you. One would be this, that Jesus continues to be risen in 2024. He's still, he's still risen. And he continues to be risen. That angel told the women, don't be afraid. Then he shared the exciting news. He's not here. He has risen. Jesus predicted that many times in Scripture. He tells them in Luke, he had the 12 with him. See, we're going to Jerusalem and everything that's written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. I'll be delivered over to the Gentiles, mocked, shamefully treated, spit upon. After, the, after they flog him, they will kill him. And then on the third day, he will rise. But it says they didn't understand any of these. 
he conquered death. He's still alive. And, and if, if we don't recognize that every day of our life, we're doing the resurrection of Christ and injustice. It's still true. He's still alive. I found some lyrics to a song that I really liked. I couldn't find everything I wanted to know. But I found out that in 1738, Charles Wesley, a great leader in the Methodist movement, wrote part of these lyrics. He wrote this, And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain for me who he to death pursued? He left his father's throne above so free and so infinite his grace. He emptied himself of all but love and he bled for Adam's helpless race. No condemnation now I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him my living head and clothed in righteousness divine. Now you might not have recognized those. But you'll recognize the chorus to a song. But I found an interesting thing when I did my AI research on the song. I found that the first one that sang something like it was someone that I liked that sang country music when I was young. I was looking for all the information I could find about amazing love. How can it be? Y'all recognize that song, don't you? Well, I found a hit on my AI search that Charlie Pride sang a song titled Amazing Love. Now, if you don't know who Charlie Pride is, you need to Google him and listen to his music. Because he had an influence on a lot of different people. He had an influence on me. I fell in love with country music with, with singers like, artists like Charlie Pride. Well, Charlie Pride had a song called Amazing Love. And I thought, surely he didn't sing this song in 73. I went and Googled it. And it's not the same song. But now listen, it's a sharp song. And in it, listen to this line. And he's talking about someone else. It's not Jesus, but, but Charlie Pride, when he wrote this song, her amazing love unending is so much more than I'm worthy of. Now, men, you want to say that to your significant other? You do that. She'll like it, I promise. But did you catch the amazing love in there? That's what took me to Charlie Pride's song. And that his love for, for his other was unending. Well, as I read through it and I looked and looked, I found Phillips, Craig, and Dean were the first ones in 1981 to sing Amazing Love. How can it be that my king would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy and honor to honor you in all I do, to honor you. And in all I do to honor you. You see, these ladies fell at the feet of Jesus. And the Bible says they worshipped him. Those feet. Those feet. I don't know what his feet looked like at that moment in time. I know what they looked like three days prior. Because three, day, three days prior, they had a big spike going through them. Those are the feet that she's grabbing, that those ladies are grabbing. Now, you don't grab the feet of a ghost. You don't grab the feet of, of, a, of a dream. You grab the feet of a person that's alive. Jesus wasn't mostly dead, but he's al alive. And he, he was alive for them. And Freddie's alive now. That's who we've gathered to worship. He's alive now. He's still risen. Number two, the resurrection is still relevant. It's still relevant. It's still in our time appropriate and right to talk about it. It's still okay for us to bring into the conversation the risen Savior. It's okay for us now to do what the angel said in verse 7. Said, said go, go. It's okay, verse 5, the angel said, don't be afraid, come. You know you're seeking Jesus. He's not here. 
it's still relevant for us to think and talk about Jesus. He's pertinent. He's with us. It's, it's okay. It's applicable. It's admissible. It's okay to be able to, to appropriate and to fit it into your conversation. Hey, young people, the resurrection is still buzzing. It's still, it is still epic. It's still awesome. It's still strong. It's still true. Hey, listen, I don't care who you are. I don't care what's going on in your life. You put the resurrection into it, it automatically gets better. You bring the resurrection. You bring the, the, the alive Jesus into whatever you're going through. That means it's relevant. You bring him in, and I promise you, it will be, get, it'll be better. I don't know what you fear. I don't know what you're going through. Tertullian, the third century philosopher, said it's a poor thing to fear the inevitable. inevitable. Poor thing. He was talking about death. Because we've got somebody that conquered death. Amen? Amen. We've got somebody that went to the grave and did what? Come back alive. So we celebrate the risen Savior. I don't know what you're scared of. I, I do know that this is kind of the anniversary to a, a movie. Uh, to a movie that at one point there was a little boy in it. The little boy's name in the movie was Alex Kenter. He, he, he was played by Jeffrey Voorhees. He, he was one of them that was killed by the antagonist in this movie. And the antagonist in this movie was a great white shark. Do you remember, do you remember Alex in the movie? Well, he's the one to the right. Alex is the one on the right. It was the movie Jaws. Y'all remember the movie? That's little Alex. And he's on his, on his surfboard out there. Well, that's his mom. That's his mom over on the, uh, on the right side of the screen, I believe. I'm sorry, on the left side of the screen. That's, that's Leah, uh, Leah Fierro. She played that, that mark. She's, she's there at the funeral of her son. I know some of you have walked down that dark road. Some of you have. That's a hard, hard road. Some of you have lost a child. Some of you have lost a, a spouse. Some of you have lost a grandchild. Some of you have lost a grandparent. Some have lost friends. I understand that. Well, I make not light of that at all. I don't. That's a tough spot. I, I get to this point to encourage you. Because, because of Christ, you've got the promise of seeing that child, that grandchild, that spouse, that grandparent, that loved one. You get to see them again. Because of the resurrection. Because of the resurrected Jesus Christ, we do not have to fear death. We get to see our loved ones again. We do. It's kind, of, it's kind of funny in the movie. Those two, after the movie, kind of parted ways. Jeffrey Voorhees, he owns a restaurant in Northern California. And he's there all the time. He runs the restaurant. Uh, he was watching the crowd recently on a Friday night. And Leah Fierro, the woman that played Mrs. Kit Kittner in the movie, Leah Fierro came into his restaurant and, and he saw it and, and he thought he would just have a little bit of fun. He knew it was her. So he, he walked right over to where her table was and he leaned down to her and he said to her, his mother in the movies, he said, do you believe in reincarnation? And she said, uh, well, no. And he goes, well, I, I really don't either, but you look a lot like a mother I had in a movie. And I, and I died in that movie. And now you're here. I sure think this might be reincarnation to which she looked and recognized him. And everybody around in the movie knew who he was. And she was the last to know. And she goes, oh my goodness, she stood up and she hugged. It's a really neat video clip. They hugged each other, a mother and a son that had been separated by death. 
and they in the movies. And they hugged each other. And it wasn't reincarnation, because I still don't believe in reincarnation. But I do believe in the resurrection. Because he's alive. And if you've got a loved one that knew Christ, and you are separated from them by death, I believe with all my heart, you'll get to walk up to them and give them a hug in heaven. And they'll be able to to see and know you, and you'll be able to see and know them. Because we serve a risen Savior. But to be able to do that, you and I have to believe. You and I have to believe that Jesus is alive. You and I have to believe. Not just that it's relevant, but that it's relevant to you. Lastly, not just that he continues to be risen and that he, it still continues to be relevant, but that the Great Commission, what the angel said and what Jesus said, continues to resound throughout the ages. It continues to resound. What the angel said, what, what he told them, what Jesus said, go back and tell my brothers I'm alive. What he said when he was Meeting with them, go and make disciples, that still resounds to us. Listen, you and I still have to pass on that, that Jesus is alive. You and I have to pass on that he is risen, that he is risen indeed, that he's alive. I want you to believe it. I think you do. In fact, I'm going to ask if you believe in the resurrected Christ to say amen. I knew you did, but listen, if you don't believe, I'd love to visit with you if you'll give me just a second at the end of the service, because I don't want you to leave here not knowing. And I, I, I want you to believe that, that Jesus wants to say the same thing to you that he said to those ladies. I close by, by calling your attention. Last point, could you put the last slide up? That, that the Great Commission continues to resound It's just the very last point. The Great Commission continues to resound. And I want you to see a word that I did my word study on. The very last one, Jesus, the Great Commission continues to resound. If it didn't make the cut, that's all right. Let me tell you what it says. The very last thing that that happens is that Jesus walks up to these ladies and he simply tells them greetings. It's in verse 9 greetings. That's when they came up and took his feet. He says, greetings. I did my word study on this. Greetings. It is the word. It's only used in a limited basis. It's the greetings that he would use in that day like we would use in this way. How you doing, man? Good. I might even to the young people, I'd shorten it down. I'd say to the young people, I'd say, what's up? <laughs> That's it. It's, it's the most common of all greetings of the day. What Jesus could have said, why are you coming here to put spices on me? Didn't you hear me when I said I was going to rise again? Weren't you paying attention? He could have said that. To Thomas, in the the room, he could have said, I should have known you, Thomas. Doubting Thomas. I should have figured it would have been you that said you had to see this. There. Here. But it says he did it in a loving way. He greeted those ladies by saying, greetings. And I bet he had a smile on his face. He did it with the most common greeting of the day. That's how he'll greet you right now. That risen Savior's not mad at you. That risen Savior loves you. That risen Savior welcomes you. That risen Savior wants you to be a part of his family. He welcomes you right now. Would you bow your heads for just a second? Because I believe that there might be someone here that he is just saying greetings. That's all he's saying. Greetings. 
He, he's saying it to you, so he might say, hey, what's up? How you doing? I love you. I'm here for you. He might say, welcome back. He might say, I've missed you. Whatever you need to say to the resurrected Savior, because he's alive, just say to him, I love you. Because that's what he wants to say to you. He simply wants to say, I love you. Father, thank you that that we have loved ones that we know are with you and that we get to see them again. Thank you that we can by believing and trusting in your name we can accept Jesus and, and we can become a Christian and that we will see you again. We'll see Jesus will be welcomed into your arms. So I pray that as we conclude this service, that if, if any of us just needed to return to you and be welcomed back into your loving arms, that we would do that at this time. So I pray a prayer of blessing over everyone that's here, everyone that that needs you, I pray they will turn to you now. And everyone that needs to just say thank you for what you've done for them, I pray you'll speak clearly greetings right back to them. Father, thank you for the risen Savior that you sent to die on the cross that didn't stay dead, but that met with those ladies and, and will meet with us now. Bless us as we leave on this resurrection day. I pray it in Jesus, our precious risen Savior's name. Amen. I want to pray a prayer of benediction over you from the scripture. If you're a guest, you'll see some ladies right over there and out in that hallway. They'll meet you. Just want to give you a gift from our family, from our church family. If you want to talk to somebody from our church family, come. I want to visit with you. Someone else does as well. I'm glad that you're here. No services tonight. Enjoy some time with your family. Here's what number six says, and I pray it as a prayer of blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance. I'm sorry. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and may he give you peace. God bless y'all. I love you. Come and see us.